So here we have the full supply view of how to build a strong armature for a head sculpture. Now, this is quite a bit of material, but if you make yourself one of these, you will be able to make any type of mold on your form or your portrait bust or whatever shape that you are thinking about making. Um, sculptures like this with this type of armature are really strong. Um, there's different types of molds that artists might want to make on a armature or a clay modeled form such as a traditional piece plaster mold. Plaster is very heavy but sometimes you get different types of results that are better or more interesting than your typical rubber silicon mold that a lot of people do now. But you can do a silicon mold, you can do a concrete mold, you can do any type of mold um, if you build an armature uh, like this. And um, I've taught for a uh, number of years and uh, I've made armatures like this, or armature stands like this, and they last you know 15 years and that's what's really cool about uh, making your own armature and making a solid armature is uh you know the more you work on it the more it just becomes like a nice old tool that just gets better and better with age so always try to make an armature stand that um is of actual good solid um material steel and uh of course a good uh a supply of wood we have a uh, first we have a solid 12 by 12 a maple quarter inch thick board and you can see that there are full four holes in the center where you just get a straight edge and you X out and you make sure that the holes are correct when we get to the flange over here um, but you can also see that there is a one inch by one inch or one and a half inch by one and a half inch depending on how you want your footing uh, at the bottom to elevate it elevate that board so your bolts can bolt on nicely you don't have anything uh, sticking onto the table but also when you pick up a mold which can be very heavy when you have all the plaster and clay and all the layering of a of a detail coat so whatever it is your process that you're going to be doing you want to be able to grab onto it from the bottom so make sure you do have a footing uh, next you're going to need your three quarter inch diameter galvanized floor panel fitting or flange um, this is going to be uh, important because that is what you anchor down with some bolts that I'll show you in a bit and your pipe will go on so that will be a typical item that you can get anywhere Home Depot um, Lowe's or any type of supply store you might even have one in the garage uh, you're going to need a, a a steel pipe fitting galvanized nipple that's what this is called it's a 12 inch 3 quarter inch pipe Make sure it's galvanized. Make sure it is steel. You do not want to use plastic. Again, we want this as strong as possible for any type of idea that you want. That's really the point is that you can get as big as you want, uh, you know, with rationale to the balance of the 12 by 12. Uh, but good solid steel galvanized piping. Make sure it's three quarter inch so it fits inside that flange right there. Uh, next, you're going to need your bolts. So you're going to need um, a four count. So four quarter inch. Uh, by one and a half inch zinc plated coarse thread uh, hex bolt and that's going to be important okay you want that coarse thread because you want it to grab nicely you don't want to use a fine thread again all this is at the uh, uh, at the any type of a supply store uh, next you're going to have your four count here a quarter inch zinc plated standard flat washer okay that's going to go on top of here now and we'll get to all that when we start assembling next is going to be um, your four count, a uh, one uh, quarter inch uh, zinc plated hex nut. So that's what these are over here, hex nuts. Make sure they're the same size. Make sure they are galvanized. The reason why you want everything galvanized is because uh, when you use plaster and clays, it really does corrode steel very, uh, you know, um, quickly. And of course, you want to be able to disassemble this and put different types of plumbing systems so you can make any shape you want. So you don't want your uh, coarse threads here to be steel to uh, corrode with that plaster, which does it pretty quickly or even cement. Uh, next is going to be your four count here. These are your standard split lock washers. Make sure they are galvanized or stainless. Okay, so you're going to need that as well. So these items here is what bolts this flange to that board. Uh, next on this on the list is going to be three feet, okay, or one meter long of six gauge solid uh, drawn copper bare wire, and you want it bare. You don't want no um, plastic or any type of a 
of a, a covering that is used for electrical. This is bare wire. Some people call it hobby wire. Again, you can find this at most uh, supply stores. Um, and make sure it is solid and it is about a six gauge. They have different gauges, but six is a proper strong gauge for what we call the crown. That is going to be what, where we anchor everything onto uh, to make an armature. Um, so that has to be thick enough for it to be uh, strong enough to hold what we needed to hold. Remember, clay is heavy, plaster is heavy. Uh, these are very heavy things. And of course we mix plaster and clay with water. So water is also one of the heaviest things that we have on this planet as well. So again, uh, don't uh, um, try to use anything that is layered in any type of plastic or any type of typical electrical wire. This is bare copper wire. At least three feet of that will be plenty. Uh, next is going to be up here is called plaster craft or any type of uh, of plaster gauze or plaster wrapping material. This you can buy at a lot of art supply stores um, online as well, of course. Uh, this one's called plaster craft, craft model material. And um, the links of all this stuff is on the description. So make sure you do click on those links if you want to go exactly to, uh, to pricing them and everything. So plaster craft, that's going to be used to hold on to our tip here with our copper wire. We'll show you that when we get to that point. And then we have um, right here is simply a, a quarter inch thick by two by two piece of wood, scrap wood. And you can see how it really is just a... Um, scrap piece of wood that I have here. Pine, something soft would be plenty. We're going to break that up into uh, into little wedges and you'll see that in a bit. So any type of scrap of uh, wood would work. Okay, that's, you know, not too thick. A quarter inch thick would do just fine. Also, tools that you're going to want to have, um, and everybody should have some of these in their um, toolbox somewhere, but again, um, if you're going to get into the practice of sculpture, it's always good to just go ahead and get yourself the tools that you need so you can build these as complex and as different as you want. This is just your standard straight up portrait armature, but uh, they have different plumbing elbows, different uh, uh, shapes. You can even do different wire work uh, to make uh, other shapes besides what we're going to be doing here, which is pretty much a crown for a head bust. Uh, what we have here is a easy uh, pair of uh, square pliers, flat nose pliers. They're also called uh, electrical pliers, XL, XLTs, but you can see how they do have a flat edge. Uh, the reason why is because we're going to want to do some bending of your wire here. So it might be kind of hard with just your regular long nose pliers. But if all you got is your long nose pliers, that should work just fine. These are a little stronger and also the, uh, the, uh, the uh, wire cutting aspect of it is stronger to cut something more thick like this six gauge. Uh, you're going to want your long nose pliers. Okay, any type. They have different sizes. So make sure you grab always grab something that's at least a good six to eight inches that's going to be strong enough before we do step two. This is step one or part one on how to build an armature. Today we're just going to be working with the standard uh, structure of your armature then we'll get into the uh, actual face and skull and get those proportions correct. But we have to build the armature first and then you're also going to want uh, a pair of diagonal wire cutters. I do know that your needle nose pliers and your flat nose pliers have wire cutters but when we go into the next step we're going to want a little closer accurate cutter so that's what these diagonal cutters are good for is more of a close-up cut for some more accurate cutting uh, you're always going to want a hammer make sure you have a good hammer doesn't have to be a big hammer just a good standard hammer and you're going to want your wrenches to uh, bolt on your your bolts here your hex bolts and your flat washers and that is going to be a 716 um, a wrench. Uh, you can also use a socket or if you don't have that you just go ahead and grab a couple of crescent wrenches and that should get you going. But again all of these materials are on the link description and uh, so you can price them out to go ahead and get the materials to build a solid armature stand that can withstand years and, and countless molds and countless modeling projects. So first step on how to build your strong armature is again to make sure that you do have your good solid made board or base. So you can see how I have screwed in the two parts and glued in a good inch by inch or whatever type of lift that's good for you. Again to uh, make clear access for the bolts and again for lifting it when you need to. Remember these will be heavy with whatever various 
um, material or uh, clay or uh, plaster or whatever type of mold making material you're going to be used. I've also oiled it with an oil based um, covering so it makes it waterproof. You can use a, a, a water based uh, covering or uh, anything that works the same way but you do want to uh, go ahead and seal it because um, you're going to be scraping off plaster and a lot of other things as the years go by and hopefully if you buy the good materials uh, it should last a long long time many many years of uh, sculpting if you cannot get a board a solid board go ahead and use a, a, a laminate or a good thick piece of plywood but make sure it is a good three-quarter inch so it doesn't uh, tend to give or bow remember we will be using heavy things to make sculptures on a strong base uh, next step is to go ahead and create an X. So all I've done is grab the straight edge and made sure I X'd out the center so we get the center point. Pretty simple. And then we begin to mark our areas. So you can get on your drill press or a hand drill. Try to go as even as possible. A drill press, a press would be the best. So you would be going up and down completely. But then again, you're going to put four holes so you can then bolt on your floor flange or your just regular three-quarter inch flange. And I'm going to do that right now. Again, you should have your uh, hex bolt. Okay, inch and a half long and you're going to want to put in between before you put your screw in there you want to put your flat washer not your lock washer your flat washer down and then go ahead and put one in hold your bolt in place make sure you put your lock washer in first and then go ahead and screw that nut in and then proceed on with the rest. Now after that's done, let's go ahead and tighten the bolt. So I'm just going to use my wrench here, tighten it up. I got a socket here, which makes it a lot easier. And you want it, you want it pretty tight. It doesn't have to be super, super tight, but tight. The lock washer will do. After those are tightened down, go ahead and just screw in your post. And it doesn't have to be super tight. Just go ahead and tighten it as much as your hand can tighten it with just your, just your regular strength. We want to be able to take that off in case of any emergencies or in case we want to just uh, uh, change heads because we can have change boards by unscrewing that with a sculpture on and that's strong enough and then place it somewhere else so it doesn't have to be tightened down too much so the next step is to grab your 
six gauge bare solid copper wire. Make sure that it is thick enough. If you can't find the six gauge, try to get something equivalent. Um, they do sell aluminum wire, but um, it won't be as strong as copper, and you can reuse this copper over and over and over again. Again, uh, all this that we're doing here with this strong armature can be disassembled and cleaned and reused over and over again. So, six gauge copper wire or hobby wire. Um, I want you just to hold your finger up and find the center point so it balances properly. And then let's go ahead and grab your large flathead wire cutters. Um, your regular wire cutters can work, but the flathead wire cutters gives you a little bit more strength. And just go ahead and nip that right in the center to split this evenly into two sections. Sometimes you have to kind of work it and cut it, you know, all the way around. And then that should just pop off. So give it a few bites in a circle and then it should just pop off easily. So after you've cut your wire into equal parts, next I want you to grab a ruler or a measuring device so we can measure the half circle that we're going to be making or it's more like a three-quarter circle. We're going to make two three-quarter circles that we're going to combine at a right angle to create the crown which is going to go on top or inside of the 12 inch pipe. So we're just going to sit here and you're going to use your thumb to bend. Try to make it as clean as possible. Um, what I'm going to go for is a, I would say about uh, a good four inch, that's plenty, diameter wide curve. It's not quite a circle, just like so. So that's about four inch. So a teardrop would be good, uh, you know, uh, shape. Then I want you to grab your flat head pliers and I want you to give yourself a good let's say four inch slack from the tip of your pliers to the bottom then I want you just to simply curve inside and do the same thing to this side four inches. Okay, make sure I'm bending at that four inches, so I'm going to be moving in just a bit. Hold it and then get a good form like so. Okay, so a four inch diameter, okay, curve or an arch. After that, then I want you to go ahead and give yourself a good two inch bite from the tip of your pliers to the end. I'm going to move that in a bit and then I'm going to do a real sharp right angle. Be sure to hold on to it correctly, move this one out of the way and a sharp twist there. Same thing on this side. Two inches and then a real sharp. Now, that copper is a little hard to work with. Remember with copper, the more you bend it, the stronger it's going to get. So you wanna do these in some minimal amounts of movement. The more you bend it, the tighter that's gonna get and that will snap at, certain, at a certain point. Um, but copper is very good metal, so it should bend nicely. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, start with my teardrop shape first. measured out to four inches diameter. Make that arch. From my edge to my four inches, a little bit more. Plenty. Okay, then I'm going to bend in. Same thing over here. Make sure I have my four inches. A little bit more. And again, 
bend in, have your arch shape. Okay, next step, two inches. Now I'm going from this part down. Okay, after you measure your two inches, right angle up, same on the other side. Clean it up as much as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. Your form will be unique to you, to how you made it. And you can see how we have our two shapes here that we are going to use for our crown, like so at the very top. Now the reason why we're using this size or using four inches is because if it's too large, then it'll be hard for us to get an accurate size head. So the bigger the armature, the bigger your head is going to be, meaning the more material, the more weight, and um, you know, um, more expensive uh, uh, you're going to be needing for whatever you're going to be casting in the end, whether it's going to be bronze or plastic or resin or whatever it is. So four inches gives us about the size of a, a little bit smaller than the brain. And then the rest of the wire work that we're going to be doing with your different type of wire that I will show you uh, in part two uh, is then forming out the shape of the skull. So consider this the uh, inner part of the brain or the inner part of the head, the brain, and then we work out from that direction. But this is going to be what holds everything together. That's why we use a good solid copper wire and that's why we're anchor, going to anchor it uh, soundly to the 12 inch pipe. So this next step is pretty simple. All I want you to do is grab your wire cutters. You could even use um, a good, maybe strong pair of, uh, of your uh, of scissors or, or needle nose pliers, uh, but the wire cutters do work the best. And make sure you cut the um, scrap wood here with the grain. So again, you see how I just have a simple little block of wood, scrap piece of wood that I just found. Uh, make sure it's just not long enough, about two inches uh, long, quarter inch thick. And all I want you to do is just get those wire cutters and you can just begin to snap off pieces. And the more uh, uh, random, the better, because we want them to be used as wedges. So again, oops, again, you see how I'm just cutting these off and be careful not to pinch or cut yourself. Just kind of grab it in the center, hold it. And you can see how I just have some random small nice chips that I can use to wedge in some wire inside that pipe. So pretty easy. About four of them is plenty. So the next step is to attach our two half circles or arches onto the top of your 12 inch pipe. Um, so when you do that or before you do that, make sure that you bend your opening here, okay, a little bit wider, okay, than just going uh, parallel. So it kind of springs and grabs. So it stays somewhat stable uh, before you put the wedges in to really anchor it down. So I'm going to start off with there and right there okay um if it's a little bit too wiggly you know you can always get a piece of tape or a piece of wire or whatever to uh sometimes a grocery bag tie wrap uh, will work just to make that stable okay next step is to grab your um small little wedges here you can see how i've just broken those into some random strips again just a scrap piece of a few scrap pieces of wood but you do want them different sizes um because uh you know you may need to wedge in more than just uh one or two so i'm going to start off with uh the biggest one that i can put in there okay i'm going to start off with this one here first i'm going to grab my hammer okay and just kind of tap it don't let it fall in okay um next step grab another piece of the wedge okay and just kind of let it get snug in there okay maybe do a little tapping on that side okay here i got a nice opening and i'll zoom in here in a bit so you can see what i'm doing here 
a little closer. And a bit more so you can see how I'm just, you know, putting an amount of wood inside there and making sure I'm hammering and straightening. Okay, now if you need more strips of wood, let's say you have a space and it's still kind of loose, mine's still a little bit loose, you can always cut smaller strips pretty easily. And then find a opening point and let it lock in. So you can keep going with smaller and smaller pieces. Trim them down to the piece that you just need. The size that's perfect for a wedge. And go ahead and tap in. And you can't put enough wood in there. The more the better. The more solid. And if it moves just a bit, that's okay. Keep hammering. And that looks pretty good to me. So again, make sure that you wedge enough wood in there so it grabs. And the reason why we do it this way is so uh, at any moment you can completely disassemble it and reuse it. Um, so you can just get a pair of pliers um, and just kind of dig that out or just get a screwdriver to hammer that in and let the wood fall in and then you can just yank the wire out. But that's good enough and strong. Now it's not the last thing we need to do, but it's definitely strong enough uh, for the next step. Um, again, try to hammer that in as good as possible and make sure it doesn't move. Now it's gonna move a bit, you know, because we haven't locked it in yet, but uh, definitely good enough for the next step. So the final step to finish your crown for your strong armature is to make sure that you have your plaster and fabric gauze and it pretty much uh, comes packaged uh, wide, I think about four to six inches wide. Go ahead and cut it into those smaller one inch strip so we can use it almost like a shoelace to uh, tighten around and you can see I also have my um, some strips of wood there just in case I need to hammer in more wood if it ever loosens up remember I get as much wood in there you also want a, a good a bowl of water next to you to activate the plaster and then we'll go into the final step to complete your crown okay so simply I'm just going to grab a hold of one of my good strips here and again you want it nice and long okay um, again at least uh, probably about 12 to 14 inches and you're just going to dump that right into the water let that soak in uh, remember it is plaster so you do have a time limit that you can work with it then I'm going to just simply wrap it as tight as I can around the center of that crown try to make it tight like you're tightening a knot And when you're done with each wrapping, go ahead and pat it down to get that plaster working and compressed into all that negative space. Four strips should do it. Now, again, I, I, I know that people sometimes use epoxy or fiberglass resins. What's, what I like about just a plaster wrapping is that it's, it's reversible. You don't like it or it's too much or it's too big or it's loosening up. Um, just put more plaster and you can just get a pair of pliers and, and just uh, break it off and rip it off. Start all over again. Again, this is my third strip here. Again, I'm trying to go as tight as I can. And one more. And you can see how secure that's going to be. But again, completely reversible and repairable. And that's finished. So you can see how you create a good locking system. So you will be able to attach any type of wire to this um, and 
build any type of sculpture within rationale of the balance of your 12 by 12, but this is gonna be a, so a strong, solid armature ready for a portrait bust. Now, you're gonna want this to cure 24 hours. Don't uh, try to work on it or don't try to do any clay work or any, any type of more attachments of wire to the crown until this has a good thorough curing point. And at 24 hours should be enough time or uh, the best uh, way to know is if you touch this and it's still damp, let it cure until fully dry, but 24 hours should be the uh, proper amount of time for that to cure. Here's the completed crown for the strong armature. And again, I do hope that you had a good time learning how to make an armature that will last you a number of years than, and an armature that will be able to allow you to be as creative as possible with as many different processes of mold making and modeling materials um, as, as you can pretty much grab your hands on because this uh, will outlast uh, most armatures that you can buy uh, pre-made at the store. It's always good to build your own because uh, beginning of sculpture and, and or any type of a beginning of an idea really should uh, the, uh, the artist should develop a relationship with the materials first and understand emphatically uh, what materials they are using and and how they can use those materials uh, in their raw state to benefit them for years to come because a good tool um, it becomes your friend and a good tool and a good um, structure um, will allow your ideas to manifest uh, more brilliantly. Um, so go ahead and make your own armature and believe you me, it will last you a long time and you will look at this armature and it will be a skeletal structure of all the creative uh, things that you uh, will make eventually. So I hope you had a good time. Um, please like and, and subscribe. I appreciate everybody's time and thank you very much.